Greetings and welcome to the 10th episode of the Math Olympiad Lecture Series. Today we'll be continuing with continued fractions. The objective of this lesson will be for students to be able to represent rational numbers as simple continued fractions and evaluate periodic continued fractions. As a bonus, we'll also be looking at similar types of problems involving other recursive functions. So what is a continued fraction? You can think of this as the Russian doll of fractions. They are basically an expression made out of a fraction, nested within a fraction, nested within another fraction, and so on. There are three common descriptions of continued fractions. If we say that a continued fraction is finite, the fraction terminates at some stage. If we label the continued fraction as simple, we are dealing with nested reciprocals. In the given example, I have the reciprocal of B1 plus the reciprocal of B2 plus the reciprocal of B3, where B1 to B3 are integers. Lastly, to describe the continued fraction as periodic, the coefficients of A's and B's will repeat in a regular pattern. This will be clearer in the problems later on. Let's have a look at example one. How can we express 314 over 137 as a simple continued fraction? This is a prime example of algorithmic thinking. If we start with a fraction less than one, we need to invert the fraction by taking its reciprocal. Then we need to convert this into a proper fraction and we keep repeating this process over and over. This continues until you get a fraction in the form of one over k. Alternatively, we could use the Euclidean algorithm. We express 137 as 314 times 4 plus 81. That is the dividend equals the divisor times quotient plus remainder. We repeat this again with the old divisor 314 as the new dividend and the old remainder 81 as the new divisor. We keep repeating this. Just to recap, the pattern is to change the old divisor into the new dividend and the old remainder into the new divisor. We keep repeating this until we get a remainder of zero. Subsequently, the quotients will form the terms within a simple continued fraction representation of any given fraction. For question one, let's look at a special type of continued fraction. One plus six over one plus six over one plus six and so on. This can be classified as an infinite continued fraction because it goes on forever, but it's also periodic because it follows a pattern. Pause the video here to give this question a good try. The trick to dealing with this form of continued fraction is to apply a substitution. We let x equals to the entire continued fraction. Since it is infinite in its periodicity, we observe that the denominator highlighted in red is exactly the same as the continued fraction. So we can substitute that with x. This gives us a quadratic equation, x squared minus x minus 6 equals to 0, which we can then solve. Since all the values are positive in the fraction, we will reject the solution of negative 2. Hence, the final answer is 3. So did you get the answer? In question two, we have a function fx that is equals to square root of 12 plus x. We want to evaluate a composite function fx to the nth order as n tends to infinity. Pause the video here to give this question a good try. To understand the problem, we could express the composite functions f of f of x and beyond to get a sense of this function. What you will find is that this is an example of a recursive function, a function acting on itself repeatedly. In this case, the radicals begin to wrap around the x almost like the layers of an onion. What we can do is exactly the same as the continued fraction problem. Let's make a substitution and call this infinite layered radical k. Then, what we can do is peel back the oniony radical by one layer. We note that the expression in the red box is still the same infinitely layered radical, so we perform a substitution. 
we can then solve the quadratic equation here to get a result of k equals to 4. At this juncture, I would like to put an important caveat for this technique. A major assumption here is that repeated functions are convergent in nature. For the purpose of math competitions, the functions are usually designed to converge to some neat answer, but this is not true for all functions. So did you get the answer? For question 3, I thought we'd take a break from Math Olympiad and have a look at a Physics Olympiad problem. Let's have a look at this resistance circuit problem. Calculate the total resistance R between point A and point B. Pause the video here and give this question a good try. The trick to this problem is once again to use substitution. We let the total resistance be x ohms. We can then keep the first ring of those three 1 ohm resistors and substitute the rest of the resistors with this red resistor of x ohms. To calculate the sum of two parallel resistors, we take the reciprocal of the sum of the reciprocal of each resistor. To find the total resistance, we can add 2 ohms for the resistors in series to the sum of the parallel resistors. But since we defined x as the total resistance, we can equate this expression to x. Next is just to do some simple quadratics and simplify the quadratic equation to get x squared minus 2x minus 2 equals to 0. To find the exact answer, we can either apply the quadratic formula or complete the square as follows. Alternatively, you could also try using brute force to apply the resistance formulas at infinitum to get this infinite continued fraction. The method will still be the same if you perform the substitution. Either way, the answer will be 1 plus square root 3 ohms. So did you get the answer? Here are today's extension problems. This is question 1 and question 2. And here is question 3 and question 4. Solutions to these questions will be posted in the info section once lecture 11 is uploaded. We have come to the end of episode 10 on continued fractions. In the next episode, we will be looking at arithmetic progressions. Do like the video and subscribe to the channel for more videos on mathematics. Thank you and have a good day of learning.